dentition pertains to the development of teeth and their arrangement in the mouth. In particular, it is the characteristic arrangement, kind, and number of teeth in a given species at a given age. That is, the number, type, and morphophysiology of the teeth of an animal. Animals whose teeth are all of the same type, such as most non mammalian vertebrates, are said to have homodont dentition, whereas those whose teeth differ morphologically are said to have heterodont dentition. The dentition of animals with two successions of teeth is referred to as diphyodont, while the dentition of animals with only one set of teeth throughout life is monophyodont. The dentition of animals in which the teeth are continuously discarded and replaced throughout life is termed polyphyodont. Overview Vertebrate dentition originated from a folding in of the Placoderms armor, evolving into the familiar condition of living reptiles, amphibians, and fish, a long row of pointed or sharp-sided, undifferentiated teeth that are completely replaceable. The mammalian pattern is significantly different. The teeth in the upper and lower jaws in mammals have evolved a close-fitting relationship such that they operate together as a unit. They occlude, that is, the chewing surfaces of the teeth are so constructed that the upper and lower teeth are able to fit precisely together, cutting, crushing, grinding or shearing the food caught between. All mammals except the monochms, the xenarthrons, the pangolins, and the cetaceans have up to four distinct types of teeth, with a maximum number for each. These are the incisor, the canine, the premolar, and the molar. The incisors occupy the front of the tooth row in both upper and lower jaws. They are normally flat, chisel-shaped teeth that meet in an edge-to-edge -edge bite. Their function is cutting, slicing, or gnawing food into manageable pieces that fit into the mouth for further chewing. The canines are immediately behind the incisors. In many mammals, the canines are pointed, task-shaped teeth, projecting beyond the level of the other teeth. In carnivores, they are primarily offensive weapons for bringing down prey. In other mammals such as some primates, they are used to split open hard-surfaced food. The premolars and molars are at the back of the mouth. Depending on the particular mammal and its diet, these two kinds of teeth prepare pieces of food to be swallowed by grinding, shearing, or crushing. The specialized teeth are uroincisors, canines, premolars, and molars a euro are found in the same order in every mammal. In many mammals the infants have a set of teeth that fall out and are replaced by adult teeth. These are called deciduous teeth, primary teeth, baby teeth or milk teeth. Animals that have two sets of teeth, one followed by the other, are said to be diphyodont. Normally the dental formula for milk teeth is the same as for adult teeth except that the molars are missing. Dental formula because mammalian teeth are specialized for different functions, many mammal groups have lost teeth not needed in their adaptation. Tooth form has also undergone evolutionary modification as a result of natural selection for specialized feeding or other adaptations. Over time, different mammal groups have evolved distinct dental features, both in the number and type of teeth, and in the shape and size of the chewing surface. The number of teeth of each type is written as a dental formula for one side of the mouth, or quadrant, with the upper and lower teeth shown on separate rows. The number of teeth in a mouth is twice that listed as there are two sides. In each set, incisors are indicated first, canine second, premolars third, and finally molars, giving I, CPM. So for example, the formula 2.1.2.3 for upper teeth indicates two incisors, one canine, two premolars, and three molars on one side of the upper mouth. The deciduous dental formula is notated in lowercase lettering preceded by the letter D, for example, DDCDP. An animal's dentition for either deciduous or permanent teeth can thus be expressed as a dental formula, written in the form of a fraction, which can be written as ICPM ICPM, or ICPM slash ICPM. For example, the following formulae show the deciduous and usual permanent dentition of all Caterine primates, including humans, deciduous this can also be written as D2DC1DP2D2DC1DP2. Superscript and subscript denote upper and lower jaw, that is do not indicate mathematical operations. The numbers are the count of the teeth of each type. 
The dashes in the formula are likewise not mathematical operators, but spacers. D denotes deciduous teeth. Lower case also indicates temporary teeth. Another annotation is 2.1.22.1.2, if the fact that it pertains to deciduous teeth is clearly stated. Pair examples found in some texts such as the Cambridge Dictionary of Human Biology and Evolution, permanent. This can also be written as 2.1.2.32.1.2.3. When the upper and lower dental formulae are the same, some texts write the formula without a fraction, on the implicit assumption that the reader will realize it must apply to both upper and lower quadrants. This is seen for example throughout the Cambridge Dictionary of Human Biology and Evolution. The greatest number of teeth in any known placental land mammal was 48, with a formula of 3.1.5.33.1.5.3. However, no existing placental mammal has this number. In extant placental mammals, the maximum dental formula is, 3.1.4.33.1.4.3 mammal teeth are usually symmetrical, but not always. For example, the IR has a formula of 1.0.1.31.0.0.3, demonstrating the need for both upper and lower quadrant counts. Equals tooth naming discrepancies equals, teeth are numbered starting at 1 in each group. Thus the human teeth are I1, I2, C1, P3. P4, M1, M2, and M3. In humans, the third molar is known as the wisdom tooth, whether or not it has erupted. Regarding premolars, there is disagreement regarding whether the third type of deciduous tooth is a premolar or a molar. There is thus some discrepancy between nomenclature in zoology and in dentistry. This is because the terms of human dentistry, which have generally prevailed over time, have not included mammalian dental evolutionary theory. There were originally four premolars in each quadrant of early mammalian jaws. However, all living primates have lost at least the first premolar. Hence most of the prosimians and platyrines have three premolars. Some genera have also lost more than one. A second premolar has been lost in all cotyrines. The remaining permanent premolars are then properly identified as P2, P3 and P4 or P3 and P4. However, traditional dentistry refers to them as P1 and P2. Equals dental eruption sequence equals, the order in which teeth emerge through the gums is known as the dental eruption sequence. Rapidly developing anthropoid primates such as macaques, chimpanzees, and australopithecines have an eruption sequence of M1I1I2M2P3P4CM3 whereas anatomically modern humans have the sequence M1I1I2CP3P4M2M3. The later that tooth emergence begins, the earlier the anterior teeth appear in the sequence. Dental formulae examples Dentition used in archaeology, dentition, or the study of teeth, is an important area of study for archaeologists, especially those specializing in the study of older remains. Dentition affords many advantages over studying the rest of the skeleton itself. The structure and arrangement of teeth is constant and, although it is inherited, does not undergo extensive change during environmental change, dietary specializations, or alterations in use patterns. The rest of the skeleton is much more likely to exhibit change because of adaptation. Teeth also preserve better than bone, and so the sample of teeth available to archaeologists is much more extensive and therefore more representative. Dentition is particularly useful in tracking ancient populations' movements, because there are differences in the shapes of incisors, the number of grooves on molars, presence absence of wisdom teeth, and extra cusps on particular teeth. These differences can not only be associated with different populations across space, but also change over time so that the study of the characteristics of teeth could say which population one is dealing with, and at what point in that population's history they are. Dinosaurs, a dinosaur's dentition included all the teeth in its jaw bones, which consist of the dentary, maxillary, and in some cases the premaxillary bones. The maxilla is the main bone of the upper jaw. The premaxilla is a smaller bone forming the anterior of the animal's upper jaw. The dentary is the main bone that forms the lower jaw. 
The pedentary is a smaller bone that forms the anterior end of the lower jaw in ornithian dinosaurs. It is always edentulous and supported a horny beak. Unlike modern lizards, dinosaur teeth grew individually in the sockets of the jaw bones, which are known as the alveoli. These differ from teeth of other vertebrates, which are directly fused to the bones of the jaw. Teeth that were lost were replaced by teeth below the roots in each tooth socket. Occlusion refers to the closing of the dinosaur's mouth, where the teeth from the upper and lower parts of the jaw meet. If the occlusion causes teeth from the maxillary or premaxillary bones to cover the teeth of the dentary and prudentary, the dinosaur is said to have an overbite, the most common condition in this group. The opposite condition is considered to be an underbite, which is rare in thropod dinosaurs. The majority of dinosaurs had teeth that were similarly shaped throughout their jaws but varied in size. Dinosaur tooth shapes included cylindrical, peg-like, teardrop-shaped, leaf-like, diamond-shaped and blade-like. A dinosaur that has variety of tooth shapes is said to have heterodont dentition. An example of this are dinosaurs of the group Heterodontos Amaridae and the enigmatic early dinosaur, Eoraptor. While most dinosaurs had a single row of teeth on each side of their jaws, others had dental batteries where teeth in the cheek region were fused together to form compound teeth. Individually these teeth were not suitable for grinding food, but when joined together with other teeth they would form a large surface area for the mechanical digestion of tough plant materials. This type of dental strategy is observed in ornithopod and ceratopsian dinosaurs as well as the duck-billed hadrosaurs which had more than 100 teeth in each dental battery. The teeth of carnivorous dinosaurs, called zephodont, were typically blade-like or cone-shaped, curved, with serrated edges. This dentition was adapted for grasping and cutting through flesh. In some cases, as observed in the railroad spike-sized teeth of Tyrannosaurus rex, the teeth were designed to puncture and crush bone. Some dinosaurs has precumbent teeth, which projected forward in the mouth. See also Odontometrics, Phalangeal formula, Dentition analyses. Equals dentition discussions in other articles equals. Some articles have helpful discussions on dentition, which will be listed as identified. Lima. Notes. References. Further reading Dar is a swindler, Chapter 1, Introduction and Chapter 2, Dental Anatomy. Primate Dentition. An Introduction to the Teeth of Non-Human Primates, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 0-521-65289-8 See also preview pages in Google Books, Feldhamer, George A., Lee C. Drickhamer, Stephen H. Vesey, Joseph F. Merritt, Kerry Krajewski, 4, Evolution and Dental Characteristics, Mammalogy, Adaptation, Diversity, Ecology, Baltimore, Maryland, Johns Hopkins University Press, pages 48 to Euro 67, ISBN 978 0 8018 8695 9, retrieved June 7, 2010. External links Colorado State's Dental Anatomy page, for image of skulls and more information on dental formula of mammals.